Hi, this is Amanda Morgan from NotJustCute.com, here with First Friday Q&A on the second Friday, thanks to the holiday. I hope you had a great start to your new year. I think we're starting off First Friday Q&A with a wonderful question. I got an email recently from Swathi in Mumbai, and she's asking how she can help her teachers understand what developmentally appropriate practice is what it means in their classroom, what it's going to look like for them in their classroom. And this is a wonderful question. I'm so glad that you asked it. There is a wealth of information on developmentally appropriate practice. There are scholars and researchers and authors who have written books and books and checklists and research studies all on this concept of developmentally appropriate practice. And the body of this work, of this work is great and it is very worthwhile. But when we're, we're teaching that to teachers, it can become very overwhelming for them on the ground in their classrooms. So when I'm working with teachers or speaking to groups about developmentally appropriate practice, I have them really focus on what that means for them in a more solid way, in a more um, a boiled down version of what all of these checklists and all of these books, which are again important, to bring it down to just a smaller, more focused concept for them to be able to apply it in their classrooms. So I start by just implementing one word, and that word is respect. If we start with that understanding that we approach our classrooms with an underlying culture of respect, that gets us off on the right foot. Then I elaborate a little bit, giving three criteria. The first is that we have respect for childhood as valuable and valid in and of itself. We recognize that the goal is not for us to just quickly move children through childhood, but recognize that childhood is an important developmental period and that should be honored and that we should be using it as it's intended, not just racing through it. The second is that we respect the larger developmental process, feeds off of that first one. So recognizing that development happens in a process in a generally a predictable order, that some a base level is developed first and then we build upon that. So for example, we don't just walk into a classroom with the goal that children will read. That's an upper performance level. But we start with those that developmental process. So with our toddlers, it's just simply having them page through books, having board books and having being around them, being engaged in song and conversation. So recognizing that layer upon layer and recognizing where we need to start in that developmental process and supporting children through that. So recognizing the larger developmental process and honoring that. The third aspect, which is very important, is that we respect children as individuals and we recognize the diversity that comes with that. So these individual children are gonna come from various different backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, family backgrounds, their individual experiences, it's all going to be different. We have to recognize that they're human beings. And so we have to be sure that our approach and our classrooms and our curriculum is respectful of those differences, that we can um, have enough open-ended approaches to allow them to expand and grow from their own levels, that they're supported at those different levels, that they're supported in those different backgrounds, that all of those are honored and respected. So if we take those three approaches, then we boil down to those questions, we apply those to the questions that we have in our classroom. So making decisions about topics or themes that we're going to address or activities that we're going to implement or even the types of supplies we have in our room. We recognize that we can show these different types of respect by choosing child-sized furniture, by making sure things are accessible to the children so that they can be independent because we recognize that developmental process of gaining autonomy. We recognize that when we plan our activities that they are open in supporting children at different levels. So for example, we have more open-ended activities. We have more discussion and supporting children in their different um, abilities, their different interests, their different backgrounds. So in summation, Swathi, that's how I begin to teach teachers about developmentally appropriate practice. We start by talking about respect, what that means for us in our classrooms, respecting childhood as valuable and valid in and of itself, respecting the larger developmental process, and also respecting children as individuals, that they're not in the same space in that developmental process simply because they're the same age or in the same classroom. So I hope that gets you started in exploring those concepts and applying them to the decisions that you're making in your classroom and the decisions that teachers are making for their different curriculum or in approaching their different 
situations in their classrooms. I love talking about developmentally appropriate practice. I've written several things on this topic and I'll link those below. I would love to have you engage in these conversations with us. Add to this conversation with your perspective on how to teach and train um, early childhood teachers on implementing developmentally appropriate practice. It's something I'll also be speaking about coming up at a conference in Georgia. I'll link that information below. So if you're in the area, we'd love to have you attend. If you have a question, send that to me at amanda at notjustcute.com. We'll try to work it in at our next First Friday Q&A. Have a great month.